In every corner of the world today, the men of the United States Army are on the job. That job may be to answer a Latin American nation's request for help in restoring order. Or across the world in the Middle East, to help a free nation build the strength on which its freedom depends. Or amid the tensions of Europe, to operate the complex technological tools which make it possible to respond instantly to the supply and necessities of a vast defensive force. Or in Southeast Asia, to probe the steaming rice paddies in search of an elusive aggressor. Wherever the challenge and whatever its nature, the men of the United States Army must be ready with a global answer, preparedness. There's little question that the effectiveness of the United States Army, or of any army, depends in the final analysis on the training and experience level of its individual soldiers. It takes time to build up these essentials, especially that second item, experience. But without them, an army, no matter how large it might be in numbers, would be an uncoordinated rabble. The men who provide the United States Army's high level of training and experience, year in and year out, are the regulars, the pros, the career men. Express it as you will, they are the backbone of that global readiness, which is a prime deterrent to potential aggressors today. Since they live and work in a world of such special demands and skills, we may sometimes tend to think of them as something apart. But these people don't live in a vacuum. Their individual, human problems are the same ones which face all of us. The questions for which they must find answers are the same. How best to provide for a family, how to plan wisely for the future, how to build a fruitful career. The answering of these questions for any of us is no simple matter. And the career soldier is no exception. In the next few minutes, you'll see how one of the men of the United States Army, just beginning his career, meets, evaluates, and faces his problem. This is Specialist 4th Class Thomas Riley, a man with a problem. Come off it, will you, Riley? You're talking about another hitch? Are you kidding? Get out and make a buck. Make a million. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK, laugh, you guys. So Riley stays in. What's in it for him? Free medical, free dental, no rent, free child. <laughs> Look at the harassment you got to take on this post. It's the same in any deal, in the army or on the outside. Yeah, but outside, he could maybe be a boss himself. He could be a major general if he'd get off his duff. OK, so he re-enlists. Tell me something the army's going to give him. And I mean something worth another hitch. If you'll button your lip, I'll tell you. OK. What's the Army going to give a GI on another hitch? Something to build on. That one stopped me. What was I building? I knew I had to find that something to build on. Sir, a message. Oh, Riley, I hear you're going on leave. Yes, sir. When you get back, I'd like to talk to you again about re-enlistment. Think about it. Yes, sir. Be sure you're making up your own mind. Yes, sir, I will. Thank you. I went home to see what I could build on there. The old hometown was going along about as usual. Things looked pretty good. Hi, Ray. First off, I saw Ray Parker. His old man owns the lumber yard. So, naturally, he's in there with his dad. 
One day he'll take over when his dad retires. His luck. When he was born, he was going to own that company. Pete Luz is working for them now. Pete and Ray and me were on the relay team in high school. Pete's a helper on the truck with Charlie Hoskins. Hey, Pete, let's get back to work, will ya? Charlie Hoskins been working 20 years for Ray's dad. And maybe he'll be working 20 more before he's done. I knew I didn't want what Pete had. Or Charlie. And one thing for sure, my dad wasn't handing me any lumber yard on any silver platter. So I was daydreaming down on Main Street by the Citizens Bank when I got this hot flash. How about going in and asking Mr. Olin J. Kelsey? Mr. Kelsey, how about lending me 100,000 bucks to build a drive-in movie theater? I didn't have to ask. I knew the answer. Sorry. 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 Then I saw Mike Pearson, our class president. He was our most likely to succeed, natural born winner in any league. Mike was selling cars, doing pretty good too, like you'd know he would. Oh, he's nuts about cars, always has been. He could tear an engine down when he was only 10 years old. Here it is, 300 cubic inch, four barrel carburetor, it's a beauty. It sure is. Oh, Pearson. Excuse me, I'll be back in just a moment. On top of that, people really like him. Right off, he's got a way with people. It's a gift, a talent. His future was built in. He'd found his spot. But I hadn't. I didn't have some natural talent or some built-up skill like he had. Then I dropped in on Billy Wells, our champion debater back in school. Hi, Tom. It's really great to see you. How's the Army? Great. Have a seat. How's your job? Oh, the job here is real great. Thank he you. was still a good persuader, this time about this corporation that he worked for, how big it was with its pension plan, fringe benefits, job and wage protections. Billy was hoping for promotion, and he needed it. What with two kids already, payments on his home and car, dental bills, doctor bills. Two other men were bucking for the same promotion. One was a college graduate. One was going to night school. Billy knew he needed training to catch up with these other guys. I had a feeling that Billy was going to make it the hard way. How did I fit in? The hometown was prosperous. The job market, good. Still in all, I couldn't envy Billy in his battle with the cost of living. Until he started in at night school, he'd be standing still, and he knew it. I couldn't do the same as Mike, because he had something special, an ability, a talent that I didn't have. I couldn't envy Pete. That work would get him nowhere. Some of my friends didn't have enough to build on. Some were doing OK, like Parker. He owned a lumber yard. I didn't. And as for old Charlie, he gave it to me straight. Get that training, kid. Without it, you're just a guy up a creek without a paddle. Like he said, how was I going to make it? There were jobs, plenty of jobs. But what jobs? Big companies, they offered big, fat salaries. Technicians wanted. Skilled mechanics wanted. Electronic specialists, missile component men, IBM operators, helicopter repairmen. The jobs were there, but I couldn't qualify for one of them. What I really had was nothing to offer. But what I really had in the Army was plenty to offer. I had a spot to fill, my spot. I was trained for it. It's 
like they tell you. The Army's job is to train our land forces and keep them up to full strength. A rough job. The Army has to think of everything. But no matter how hard they try, there are still plenty of things you can argue about. And did we argue? A man in the Army should not be married, period. I don't know. You get the married allotment, you live off post. The Army don't want you married. They'd rather have you married than not at all. The Army wanted you to have a wife, they'd have issued you one. Besides, you can have a baby in a post hospital for nine bucks. When I get married, I'm getting out of this man's army. For what? You should see the guys back home what they have to go through. <laughs> Listen to him. They should have never given them that leave. You guys will see. The Army gives a family something to build on. Like what? Like security. I wouldn't want to have a wife and kids and lose my job. In the Army, you've got it made. The family's going to be OK. And how about that housing? Not bad, even though you need a little seniority to get it. You don't have to scratch up the rent every month, either. The first couple of years can be plenty rough, plenty. Little kids are always getting sick. It can break you. Doctor's bills, hospitals, all that's on the Army. And believe me, I wouldn't mind being raised on an Army post if I was a kid. They've got it all. The playgrounds, the schools. It's kid country, like a park. It beats growing up on a city sidewalk, like I did. An Army wife has it all right, too. She's got the PX, the different Army deals, the commissary, the nursery. The whole works the way they want it. She's got the PTA and all that get-together club stuff that women go for. Around the clock, from Reveille to Taps, the Army takes care of its own, 24 hours a day. Should things go wrong, you're not facing it alone. The Army goes as far as it can to help. And helps with the Army chaplains and through the Army Relief Fund and Red Cross. Well, I could see that was okay for the guys who were married. But what if I didn't get married? And I wasn't just about to. Or at least not until someone came along who made me change my mind. Who was that? What if I did want to get married someday in the future? How would I build for it? For one thing, I could leave the Army, go home and get a job. So fine, what kind of job? I knew the answer already. With no training, I could start at the bottom. With no training, I could pump gas, wear a different uniform, snap to when I was told. Then, maybe because some bosses just can't be satisfied, I'd get fired. Fire, 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 fire. No, to get a decent job, I need a technical training. But training cost money in civilian life. Most of what I earned, I'd have to pay out to go to night school. School. That was something we talked a lot about after duty hours. We needed job training. We all agreed on that. Without a specialty, a man is nobody these days. I mean nobody. He's a ghost. You can't even get a job running an elevator without a darn certificate. Who runs elevators? They got push buttons, automation. Well, still, when I get out of the Army, I'm heading straight for night school. Learn a trade or get into some kind of racket. A lot of guys try it, and they, they give up. They just give up. If I was to re-enlist, know what I'd do? What? 
I'd take that option for aviation maintenance school. Why not? You get paid, it's on the Army's time, and you still got your off-duty hours for yourself. I've been thinking of that course in electronics and all that. It sounds like a great field. We all knew Army training gave a man a chance this, to get into top-paying jobs. We'll get two indications. You can't beat the Army right, service one, schools. Floorboard. They're the best. Now, each one of you place the switch in the calibrate position. The training aids are the most modern in the world. Take radio electronics. If you'll turn the preset switch to channel two, you will see the transmitter tune itself automatically to this new frequency. Our selective four-speed gear transmission located here. You can learn automotive mechanics. When they get you through know, with you, you know just about everything there is to know about almost know any kind of equipment. I'd like you to place it in fourth gear. You notice, gentlemen, now that all the component parts back to your rear differential. Something to build on. And I could have it as my option with just one more hitch. Why not? What was holding me back? Well, for one thing, this idea I could have some fun if I got out. You get these dreams. You're a hotshot civilian, see? behind the wheel of a big convertible. A cigar in your mouth. You're loaded up for man country. A blonde there beside you. Ah, oh, why settle for one? Long as we're dreaming, make it two. Uh, one ought to be a redhead. fun cost dough. Then you get the price tag. Ouch. End of civilian dreams. The old service club may not be dream stuff, but it's no strain on the budget. Here they come. Hey, man. I thought. And the scenery's not bad at all. a fella gets used to the easy social life. There's almost always something doing. And if you get married, you both can be a real part of Army life. The Army does give you the time to enjoy yourself in lots of ways. Between us, my own bunch, we had seen the whole USA, all on Army vacations. 30 days, a whole month, or on three-day passes, or traveling on Army duty. You should see. When I was stationed out at Fort Ord, we went up to San Francisco every weekend. What a town. One time, we got a three-day pass, four of us. We shared the gas, and we went to see L.A and Hollywood. And then we made it across the border. Mexico. On a three-day pass, 
We did it, I tell you. We barely made it back by Reveille. I took a leave, me and these two guys. We went all the way from Fort Lewis, Washington to Yosemite. That scenery, boy. How'd you get there? Flew, half price, special rate, good deal. Give me Paris anytime. I took a leave and came in from Frankfurt. I met a girl in the Bois. The Bois? I met a girl in the Champs. What Champs? Champs Elysee, you idiot. Where have you been? You should see. A couple of us guys went over to London. It's really great. On my last leave, I went to Washington, D.C. Here lies an American soldier, known but to God, to serve as others have in the long roll call down through U.S. Army history. To serve is to be proud, and pride, too, is something to build on. That feeling of pride stays with you when you're back with your outfit doing your part in a field problem. time is always gab time. Today it was the great gravy train. To hear him talk, you'd think the streets were paved with gold. You can make a million in civilian life. I know a guy that opened up a laundromat, and he's cleaning up. No sweat at all. Guy gets into anything these days, and he's made. Made what? You can hit the jackpot. A million jerks start their little businesses. The only thing they hit is the family for some coins. Figure the percentages. One out of 10,000 is going to be a millionaire. You got a better chance of making five star general. I mean, you just made spec four. Fall in. It was eating all of us, a big gold rush. I could see it now. In or out of the army, you have to work for anything you get. The same guys who couldn't make it in the army wouldn't make it in civilian life. In or out of the Army, the same rules apply. Leadership. You have to earn it, if it's Army or if it's civilian. Reliability. You gotta be there on the job, whether it's standing reveille formation or checking out against a timesheet. Training. You need it in the Army. You need it outside. Attention to detail. It's exactly the same. Respect for authority. You can't get ahead without it. Hard work. You can't dodge it. It's no gravy train for civilians, and it's the same in the Army. Ain't no sense in going home. Ain't, Ain't no sense in going, going home. Yodi's got your girl and gone. Yodi's got your girl and gone. Sound up. One, two. Sound up. Three, four. Bring it on now. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four. The Army is a team, working together, belonging together. When you're with it, 
is a satisfaction, a spirit. It's your outfit. And now I knew the Army offered something more, a chance to get that training, that education, leadership, a chance to make my plans with guaranteed security while I build for my future, in the Army or out. Some men the Army will not re-enlist. I wanted to re-enlist, and the Army wanted me. Career counselor had all the facts to help me choose a service option. I belonged here, at least for now. I signed up for one more hitch. In the United States Army, this hitch would give me a running start in life, something to grow on, something to build on, and this time, something for me. And I do solemnly swear, and I do solemnly swear, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Upon men like these, so much depends. They are the citizen soldiers who, since our beginnings as a nation, have stood guard over our liberty. They're average men, but they're important people. Times change. But the need for able men to meet the demands of those changing times remains. The challenges to freedom are never-ending and worldwide. Our readiness can be no less if freedom is to survive. The long heritage of service which has been built by the men of the United States Army needs no comment from me. You know it well. Carrying forward that continuity of service to meet the challenges of the 20th century are the regulars of today's army. And they do so with the satisfying knowledge that through their service, they are giving themselves and their families and their nation something to build on.